Thank you. Um, so uh, I made a handout. I will not read it because I think it will take more than five minutes, but you can, I numbered it in order to facili facilitate discussion. The view I would like to explain to you is uh, called limitarianism and in just one uh, somewhat simplified phrase, it's the view that it is morally either bad or wrong that somebody is super rich. Um, that is a view, um, I've been developing this, but I should immediately say there's a long history of similar views in the history of uh, uh, political and economic thought, um, and of course also in religious uh, views, uh, but it is um, surprisingly lacking as an explicit statement from contemporary uh, thinking about distributive issues in political philosophy, which is where I situate myself. Um, I think it follows from a number of different views, including uh, utilitarianism, but including also very different uh, moral philosophies, such as relational egalitarianism. But I think there is some additional power for the world as it is by, by expressing it explicitly, even though it will follow from other views. So I think that also uh, makes me hopeful that there should be some room for, again, an overlapping consensus. This view is also about the duties. It is about who should pay or who should give the money that we need in order to do those actions, either governmental or non-governmental, to um, address poverty or address other um, urgent needs. Um, the, the basic intuition is very simple. The idea is that um, if you become richer and richer, at some point additional wealth will not no longer contribute contribute to your material quality of life. This is disputed, but I think uh, many ordinary people endorse it. And um, a study I did with uh, colleagues from economic sociology actually confirms that 69.5% um, 69 69 of the Dutch endorse the idea that at some point you have so much money that it can no longer contribute to your quality of life. But it's a different question whether that what follows from this. And what limitarianism says is that we should use that, that money above this richest line in order to address uh, poverty and also in order to address um, collective action problems, most uh, prominently climate change. Now, is this, a, uh, as a political view, some would say, oh, but this is too utopian. It's not uh, feasible. Um, because you can't tax uh, at 100% because the economist would, would say that then this, you have this incentive effects and you will basically uh, reduce uh, the tax base. However, I think um, it is a, um, it should, it's best viewed as a view that is both political and non-political, hence uh, drawing on voluntary, um, uh, voluntary donations. And the precise combination of those two elements, political and um, you could say ethical, depends on what is currently seen as feasible in the world and for which you also have a consensus among the population that there should be certain acts. And um, another um, thing that I, is important to mention is that you may, in order to increase the political feasibility, you may have to do certain, um, prep, you could call it preparatory work. Most importantly, um, doing the work that has been laid out by, by economists such as uh, Saez, um, and uh, I have the reference here in the list, um, Saez and Zuckman on how to try to minimize international cap, cap, capital flight. I mean, I think for many of the things that are currently suggested in political philosophy, actually this is a kind of precondition that is currently not met. Now, why should we, why should we, um, give away or take away that surplus money. There's a long list, and I will just, in the interest of time, mention a few, but I think surplus money in itself already can create harms, such as undermining political equality, leading to domination um, by the super rich. It also leads to environmental harms because the super rich, on average, uh, pollute massively more than the middle classes and the poor. Uh, and then there's also already the consequentialist argument that, that flows from all consequentialist theories, including utilitarianism. I think, and I will end with those two small two points, there, it's often said that, oh, well, this may be a good thing, but actually the super rich deserve their money. However, I think um, this argument, even though it's widespread in society, doesn't work because um, we are all in a collective enterprise 
in order to generate uh, the wealth that we create. And much of the preconditions are actually inherited from previous generations. So I think that argument can be um, objected to. And as a, the last point I want to make is that I think uh, there is a deep philosophical assumption behind uh, the debate on, on inequality and the super rich, and that has to do with duties and rights. The whole dominant uh, ideology is about rights and no longer about duties, and also about um, tracing success and failures to individuals, and no longer seeing that actually we are both in networks, but also that there is a huge amount of luck involved in what we can or cannot do. Thank you.